So you want to do it. You want to take down their network. Well, you come to the right place, as I will show you how to commit cybercrime, and along with that, I will give you some tips on how to choose the best prison gang available. Now, of course, I'm just kidding. We're not gonna actually commit a cyber crime, but I will show you the steps that somebody could take if they gained an unauthorized access to one of your microtic routers. So please do not use uh, the steps that I'm about to show you in real uh, world networks, as that would be considered a crime and you can be held liable. But without further ado, so here's what uh, you could do, of course, if you had containers enabled, you could just uh, put up whatever container image you like, Kali image, whatever. But uh, that's not what we're gonna do today. We're going to use uh, a feature of traffic generator that I did a video before on, but I did not mention uh, a couple of features it has. Uh, so that's what we're gonna look at right now. If we go to uh, tool traffic generator, it has a command named inject. It can target a specific interface on the router and it accepts the data as a variable. So you could literally um, craft your own packet using router scripting and then inject it into a specific interface. Now, of course, that again, it requires uh, quite a bit of uh, computing power if you want to craft a lot of packets. So you wouldn't be able to do like a flood flood attack, uh, but you would be to able to do some sort of little um, surgical move with that. Um, so we're not going to use that uh, in this case. Instead, we're going to use the inject pcap um, command, which uh, takes a pcap file. If you don't know what that is, it's just a file containing uh, recorded packets. So if we have remote access to a router, we can simply copy a PCAP file that has a bunch of maliciously crafted packets and have them injected into the network. So let's do that. Let's create a malicious PCAP file. I have um, Kali Linux virtual machine already um, installed. Uh, if you want to learn how to do that, um, I suggest you watch my video on Quemu KVM and Vert Manager as I uh, show you not only how to set up CHR, but also other virtual machines there. Uh, so in Kali Linux, I have installed a tool uh, called Yersinia. Now this tool can do a bunch of attacks, uh, but the one that I will use this time is uh, a CDP uh, attack. CDP stands for Cisco Discovery Protocol and it is widely used by networking equipment. So the way it works is that there is this specific MAC address that is, that is assigned for CDP and any device that accepts uh, Cisco network discovery uh, packets is listening for packets addressed for this particular MAC address and it has to then process them. And this can be used to interfere with the uh, correct functioning of the router and quite possibly overloading it and causing a reboot. So what we're going to do is create a bridge that is not um, used by anything and we will launch an attack on this bridge. And at the same time, I will use Wireshark to record a PCAP file. The terminal, I want to create the interface. Now that I've created the interface, I will start up Wireshark. And as you can see, there is this interface I named virtual. I'll just start recording. Now I can open your Yersinia. And there on the edit interfaces, I can just select this um, bridge I just created and disable anything else. 
then I'll click launch attack. There's a whole bunch of attacks that you could do here. So I'm interested in the CDP flooding attack. So I'll just click OK and immediately thousands of packets are being forged and then I'll immediately stop it. Uh, list attacks, stop. Uh, okay. If we do not uh, stop it pretty much immediately, it will generate an absurdly large uh, PCAP file. It's very likely that it will crash your uh, Kali uh, virtual machine. So that's why I had to stop it right away. Now I've stopped the Wireshark as well, and I can save the PCAP file. Click on Save As. Let's call it uh, CDP flood and select the PCAP file format. Okay, I have it in my home folder and I'll just enable um, SSH service so that I can copy this file out of my virtual machine. Now on my host, I can open a terminal do scp kali at 192.168.122.217 which is the IP address of my virtual machine followed by column and I named it cdp underscore uh, flood dot pcap and I'll save it on uh, my desktop Okay, I've copied the file. As you can see, it's already 384 megabytes from just those few seconds of generating the attack. And now I just need to copy that file onto the router. I'll just drag and drop it into the Winbox. Okay, the file has been copied uh, on poor network conditions. Obviously, it will take quite a while. You don't necessarily need uh, 300 plus megabytes large PCAP file. Uh, if you launch the attack very briefly, it would still be thousands of uh, neighbor uh, discovery uh, packets. And that, that might still be enough um, to cause issues. So a smaller 100 mega, megabyte file perhaps uh, would have suited as well. You need um, that storage space or at least enough space on the RAM of, on this uh, router uh, for this to be possible. But I got my PCAP file ready, so I'll just launch the attack on this unsuspecting uh, HAP AC squared. Of course, if I uh, had this interface connected uh, to a switch with a lot of devices, then I would be targeting all of them at the same time if they are listening to the CDP MAC address. Uh, so I'm just gonna click inject PCAP, select the correct interface, which is Ether5 for me, select the PCAP file, so I named it CDP flood. And I will also take this loop check mark uh, before I click start because uh, if we simply inject all these packets, it will add all of these uh, neighbors to this uh, target router, but it might not crash. On the other hand, if we loop it, the router will still have to process that pa those packets even if those neighbors already exist, so that will cause it to crash. Now if I click start, we should see that a thousand Thousands of packets are getting injected. So yeah, I can see the numbers are going up. There's hundreds of thousands, over a million of packets injected already. And, and of course, the router disappeared from our neighbors list because it rebooted. I will stop the attack. And let's see when our target shows up in the neighbor list again. took around 1 million neighbor discovery packets for this little home router to, to reboot itself. That's more neighbor announcements that it would see in its entire lifetime probably. A larger router will probably require more, but regardless, you can use 
a rel relatively low powered microtech router to wreak havoc on a network. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you in the next one.